So, um, session. We're calling this a retreat. A retreat is kind of more moderate than a session, I think, and a little shorter. But um, a session is traditionally seen. I don't. It kind of makes it a bit dualistic, and but it's seen as a as a battle between the small self and the big self. And the small self wants to. Oh gosh! <laughs> the website, by the way. But we'll stop now. Okay. The people new here will think we're very conceited. Um, yeah. So it's about really loosening the grip of the self, which 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 pragmatically seems to happen when we sit a long time. And I, I kind of wanted to talk about that this evening, and talk about why. Uh, this tradition is known as the path of, the path of not knowing, which is uh, given how much everybody knows and how certainly they know. It's quite refreshing that we're on a path of not knowing. Um, okay. So why 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 is it the path of not knowing? And. Um, I mean, I could just ask you some simple questions, really. Uh, if you really, really looked at what you believe about yourself, do you think it's true? And um, if I asked you to describe your life, how good a description would it be? Do you think you could describe your life? I don't think you can. I mean, whatever you say is just a partial view. It's not going to give a real picture. It's not. It's not going to feel like you you experienced it. It'll just be like a surface description. But even for you, um, what is your life like? And you tell yourself the story. <clears throat> and of course, we all have stories about our lives, and they may or may not be true, but we're really attached to them. <laughs> um, and I could say to you. If you ask yourself the question, who am I? What do you come up with? Or if you ask yourself, what am I? What do you come up with? Or even if I ask you to say, uh, where am I? What do you come up with? I mean, you might say, I'm in a Zen door in Liverpool, but what, what is that? You know, what does that mean actually? You're, you're in a Zendu in Liverpool, which is a city in, in England, which is part of the UK, which is part of the world, which is just a very small planet around a very small sun in a rather minor um, galaxy, of which there are apparently there are billions. I mean, you know, where are you really? Where, where are you? Who are you? What are you? And can anybody answer substantially any of these questions? Um, I mean, can you? I, I mean, maybe you can. For those of us who can't, in, the, in this tradition, this, this kind of insubstantiality, this uh, lack of being able to find an absolute ground to where we stand is called emptiness. We call it emptiness. Uh, or shunyata. Um, and in fact, what, 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 did the, what, what did the emperor ask of Bodhidharma when he said, vast emptiness and nothing holy about it? Did he say, what, can anybody remember the question that the emperor asked of Bodhidharma? He said, what is the Buddha or something? I can't remember. And Bodhidharma replied, vast emptiness and nothing holy about it. So the question, what you know, vast emptiness and nothing holy about it. Uh, one one practical way to look at this is, uh, how would you feel? How would it feel for you, rather, if you had to give up all the ideas and beliefs and concepts that guide your life? What about if they were to just fall away? How would that feel? And then I want to ask you another question. Um, 
I, I, I imagine that all of us at some point, maybe not on a regular basis, uh, but certainly it arises for us that we recognise that each of us definitely has some intrinsic basic wisdom. It's just kind of there and sometimes it just pops up and when it does and when it gives us an answer to some issue or problem or way of being, we intuitively know that it's right and we don't question it. And uh, this, this, uh, what is this wisdom that arises and definitely arises I, I think uh, on Sashin. I mean, Genpo Roshi used to describe it very pragmatically when he said that when you're in that place and if, you, if you're in the shower having, you know, and you've got, and you're using soap and you drop the soap, when you're in that place you catch the soap before it hits the ground and you don't think about it. There's a kind of wisdom that comes into operation, you know. What is that? Um, and, and, when, and, when, and, when it, and when it does kick in, it doesn't bear any reference, it's nothing to do with Buddhism, it's nothing to do with sutras, it's nothing to do with teachers. Um, if you Google it, you probably wouldn't get an answer about what it is. So, you know, what is this wisdom? And, um, I mean, for all these questions, what comes up for me is I don't know. And when, when, when if people want to start uh, cone practice with me, one of the, before they start, one of the questions I ask them is, where do emotions or where do thoughts come from? So if you look for the origin of your thoughts, for the origin of your emotions, for the origin of the universe. Uh, <coughs> can anybody find them? I mean, we all we all sit on this stuff and think take it all for granted, you know that. that <laughs> but if you really dig deep, you discover actually you don't know, and. Um, one of the, one of the, I, I think, uh, wonderful things about this practice is the encouragement to live out of this not knowing and just have the question, to live the question. And I've got a quote here, I think you, you, some of you may be familiar with it, it's a really famous quote, uh, by the, it's called, it's Rilke, Rilke's advice to a young poet. And uh, Rilke said, I would like to beg you, dear sir, to have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live with them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. So it's not about answering the question, it's about living your way into the question. Um, and that, that's really difficult to do. I, you know, has anybody ever, can, I, can anybody not be immediately tempted to find some solution to a problem? It's hard to sit with just the open question. And he says, gradually, without even noticing it, you will live your way into the answer. <clears throat> and that brings me up, brings me to, because we're on, we're on retreat, something that definitely happens, it happens on retreat, but it also happens in ordinary life, it happens to anybody that's been in this practice for a long time, is that you hit a real dry patch, and you can hit it on retreat and think, why am I suffering all this discomfort, why have I left home, why, why, why aren't I watching the telly, why aren't, you know, all kinds of questions arise, and this is, 
you know, as I started the talk, this is the battle that goes on between the small self that has its own agenda and this bigger, wiser self that's in you. Um, the, the, it, it reminds me a bit of, uh, of, of, of a child who eats as if a child likes sweets or whatever it likes, it will eat as many of them as it can get. It won't, it won't stop just because you say, that's not doing you any good. It just wants the sweets. And the self's like that, you know? It's not going to stop because you say, having all these thoughts, all these ideas, all these concepts, being really attached to being selfish, not caring about other people, all the things that, that Buddhism says cause you suffering, you're not going to stop. Not if it gives you gratification. <laughs> and so that's why, you know, on retreat, we, we, we arbitrarily, we choose, we actually choose to restrict ourselves in a voluntary fashion. We actually say in advance, I'm going to go into a situation in which the parameters are such that I can't do what I normally do. And, 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 and then the pattern of what happens is that, you, that, you, that the self kicks up a fuss for a few days. And then it realises that actually maybe there is something in this. Maybe this other part of me that's telling me to be quiet and sit and, and focus Maybe there is some wisdom there, maybe there is some use to doing this, but it takes a while. Um, and I've completely lost track of what I was talking about. <laughs> 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 what was I talking about? Uh, I've lost it. <laughs> living with the question. Oh, living the question, that's right, yeah, living the question, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, so living the, qu living the question sometimes leads us to, because an answer doesn't arise right away, you know, what happens is that if we're kind of conscientious and, and, and committed practitioners we think, well we'll just sit and wait, you know, and the universe will bring an answer, we don't need to act, we don't need to, you know, and then we get fed up and we decide that we're going to need to act because the universe is taking far too long to bring around the right solution. <laughs> so, we, so we don't act. So we do act, I mean. And, you, and often it's, it's, you know, we jump the gun. The, the thing is, if we don't jump the gun, what we feel is this, we're in this kind of dry desert and nothing's happening. You know, life is... Life is we're, we're stuck. But definitely, if you can stay there, you can be in it, and it is hard, and I'm probably the worst, at least as bad as anybody else in this room at staying in it, um, then, it, it, then a fruitful time does arise. It definitely does, a, a fruitful time does come along. Um, it just seems that this is all part and part of the process, that we have to live the question. Um, and um, and then, what, what else? What Bodhidharma said in response to the question, what is Buddha or whatever the question was, I can't remember, vast emptiness and nothing holy about it. The, Buddha, the emperor also asked him... Um, who is it? Who is it? The son. Oh, who, who, who stands before me, yeah. Uh, and he said, I don't know to that one, which is exactly what I'm talking about. You know, when he said to Bodhidharma, the emperor said to Bodhidharma, who's standing before me, he said, I don't know. Which was very confusing for the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why do you think he said, I don't know? What, what was he talking about when he said, I don't know? Was he talking about this guy who'd been called, or who we now call Bodhidharma, but maybe called Joe or Fred or whatever? Why didn't he just say Fred or Joe? Or? Why didn't he tell him his name? Was he still looking perhaps? Pardon? Was he still looking? Still certain he hadn't resolved anything for himself at the moment? No, I think, I think by then he was pretty solid, you know, in himself and knew, and knew who he was. Because the Emperor thought he knew who he was. Because is this the conversation where he also says, how much merit have I got from doing exactly, all yeah. this? You know, the Emperor thought, he built all these temples, he was emperor, he was good emperor. Yeah. And he would say it's more that Bodhidharma was telling to the, saying to the emperor, well, I'll pretend I don't know so that you can realize that you shouldn't know either. 
sort of thing. Okay. Sort of teaching the emperor. Okay. But, yeah, you was teaching definitely, and the yeah. emperor didn't pick up on it, but it wasn't as though Bodhidharma knew who he was, because the, the, the part of him that was responding mm -hmm. was the part that I've been talking about, the, the wisdom part that we don't know. We don't know the source of it, you know, it just arises. He actually doesn't know, and I don't know, and you don't, I'm assuming you don't know what is the very source of your being. So he said, I don't know. And also when he asked, as Emma's pointed out, when the emperor asked him what merit he would receive for all the stupas and temples and good deeds he'd done, he was really disappointed when, when Bodhidharma said, you get no merit for that, mate, no merit. And that, that, that brings up another question for you, I mean, how, how, uh, how many things do you do, do you do for no merit? <laughs> many? Oh. And when I say merit, I mean, uh, kind of, a reward of some kind. If I include feeling better about myself, probably none. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting question, though, isn't it? Because I mean, why shouldn't you feel better about yourself? It's nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. No, I agree. I think. I suppose the important thing is, if you feel better about yourself, will you be kinder to other people? So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so if one leads to the other, maybe it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry, just go back to something you said really yeah. early on about you know this this notion that uh, like the reduction of uh, I live on a very small planet, planet around a tiny sun, yeah. an insignificant part of the cosmos that yes. in the you know in the a, asshole in, in a wimpy kind yeah. of galaxy, yeah. <laughs> It's nothing. Yeah. And, and yet, I don't know what perspective that is. But, but for, you know, from what perspective would I be yeah. talking there? You know, like somebody stuck out at the other end of the universe is saying, oh, look at this. So the only perspective I've got ultimately is not that absolute. It's actually, yeah. this, this has got to be good yeah. enough. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what's happening at the other end yeah. of the cosmos, yeah. ultimately. That's right. And, and that's the paradox that, that the, it's, it's the intrinsic paradox of the whole situation is that it's the vehicle that, ma that, that, manif that, that, provide, that provides, that can manifest this unknown, this what we don't know, mm. is very solid mm. and rooted to the earth, you know, it's here and we're attached to it yeah. and we know it, well we think we know it because we can feel it and pinch it and it hurts. And yet, within that, there is another, there is another perspective, mm. and that's really, I mean, and, 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 and that's essentially the whole essence of the retreat. In a way, is about experiencing a change of heart and a change of perspective, such that you can experience the world in a way in which there is less attachment to your own ideas, concepts, da, 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 da. and paradoxically, and this was, one of, this was the understanding that the Buddha had is, that when we let go of that attachment, we, our, will, our well-being actually improves. It's counterintuitive because we think that the more we look after ourselves, the better we'll be. And yet it turns out that it doesn't work like that. Well, it does for some folk. <laughs> it seems to for some folk. I mean, if you can get through your whole life like that, then congratulations, you know, but most of us can't. Can you explain that a bit more about, uh, you think that if we look after ourselves, we we'll No, I mean, if, if, we're, if we're in... The small self thinks the more selfish it is, the oh, better off it will be. Right. Yeah. But in fact, it turns out, practically, it seems that the less selfish we are, the better our sense of well-being 
what's that phrase? There's a phrase, isn't there, about um, kind of selfish compassion. What's that word? A phrase. But Altruist. pardon. Altruistic. Yeah. Th- uh, no. Uh, compassionate self-interest. Compassionate self-interest. Something like that. Yeah. yeah which always comes up when there's when there's a question about compassion, people always, but finally, you, you must only be doing it for yourself finally. But there is, a, there is a way of experiencing the world in which in doing something for yourself, you are automatically doing it for everyone else. Sounds a bit cosmic, but it's nearly nine o'clock. So is there any, uh, does anybody like to make a, any contribution or comment or disagreement or how could you ever be sure that what you were doing was not for your own benefit? I give in. I don't know. <coughs> you ask difficult to do anything. Yeah, not yeah. For your own it's a really interesting question, how yeah. You yeah. You can't can you? I think it's only for each of us to know that in ourselves, isn't it? But how can we know it? I don't know. Because every time we think of something we do, which we think is not for our own merit, we're not being sure. Mm. No, I agree with you. It's, it's a hard question to answer. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you shouldn't ask it. Pardon? Maybe you shouldn't ask it. Yeah, just do, do your best. <laughs> do your best, yeah. That's all you can do, isn't it? Yeah. yeah.